I'm Danielle Wilson. I'm a freelance social media manager, trainer and consultant, and my business name is Dream Social. Today I'm going to be um, doing an introduction to Facebook and Instagram ads. Um, so we'll be looking at why you should consider using ads, what to do before spending any money, the Facebook pixel, looking at the different ways you can um, run ads, which is either boosting through Ad Center or through Ads Manager setting up your ads with Ads Manager, what makes an ad work, how much to spend, and the key data that you should be keeping an eye on. So first of all, um, why, you sh why should you consider Facebook advertising? 71% of all adults in the UK age 13 plus can be reached with adverts on Facebook. And you think that that is a massive number of people. And out of that number of people, 74% of Facebook users visit the platform every day. 42% of the population are on Instagram right now. Again, a massive amount of people. 50 million, that should be 50, sorry. 50 million users now use Instagram stories every day. 68% of millennials consume stories on Instagram. Women click on an average of 10 ads per month, and for men, it's an average of eight per month. Facebook is the number one ad channel for both business to customer and business to business companies. This makes it bigger than Google ads and for business to business companies, even bigger than LinkedIn. Another thing to consider is even if people are not on Facebook and Instagram in a work capacity, they are more than likely there personally, so they will still see your ads. Even if you're a business to business company, you're still trying to sell to a person. Facebook ads are cheap in comparison to other ads. They also allow for excellent targeting, different types of placement and different types of formats. So there are lots of possible possibilities as you will see. But there are some things you consider before you spend money on ads. Most people access Facebook and Instagram through mobile devices. So you need to make sure your website is optimized for mobile viewing. Also, check your load speed of your website. People tend to have a short attention span. So if it's too slow to load, you may lose people that visit as they can't be bothered to wait for it to load. You need to make sure it's easily accessible and simple to navigate. Make sure your checkout processes are simple and easy to use with a recognized payment system. You should also make sure that the Facebook pixel is installed and the event codes. I'll be going on to these later on so you know what they are. You should also make sure that your organic, which is your not paid social media, is good um, and consistent. So that's your business page on Facebook, your Instagram account, wherever you are on social media, really, because people will go and check them out. And if you have a quality page in Facebook eyes, it also helps when you run ads because they take this into account. And if you are going to have um, a sales funnel in place, make sure you've got the systems to follow up and retarget people that are coming at the top of the funnel, your cold audience, to bring them through your funnel to the bottom where they might become buyers. So now I'm just going to look at what the Facebook pixel is. The Facebook pixel is a bit of code that sits on your website and it tracks the actions of anybody that visits your website when the Facebook app is still open on their phone or on the computer, which let's face it is probably most of us these days. I never log out, I know I should, but I don't. So the basic code sits on each page and it will just capture page visits, but you can set up event codes and these can be tracked as well. So this is things like if someone clicked on a particular product, added something to their cart, completed a purchase, filled in a form, things like that. Once you are then running ads, this data can be used by Facebook to retarget your website visitors. So for example, if someone added to a cart, but then for whatever reason left the website, you can retarget them with a specific ad from Facebook. 
I think we've all noticed this in action when we've been browsing on different uh, websites. And then when you go back into Facebook, um, there is the product that you've been looking for. This is all made possible by pixel data. The other way you can use this data, which is really useful, is to help create audiences for your ads that match people who have previously visited your website or taken a certain action on it. These are called lookalike audiences. I'll be talking more about all the different audiences you can do later on. As you can see, there are huge possibilities with the pixel. And even if you aren't going to run ads immediately, I would advise you to get it set up on your website as it will begin building up a picture of your website visitors for future use. What it can also highlight if there's a problem with any part of your website. For example, if there are a lot of people adding to cart but not going through with purchases, it might be because of a complicated checkout process. Or does it take too many steps for someone to add their name to get a free do download and so on? So a handy tool where you, if you don't know whether you've got a pixel set up on your website, say for instance, if you've not done your website yourself, you've got a web developer that did it and you don't know whether it's set up or not. Um, or if you just want to check other websites to be nosy whether they've got a pixel set up or not. Um, there's a really handy tool to do it. Um, it's called the Facebook Pixel Helper and it's a Google Chrome extension. So I'm just going to come out of the presentation in a second and show you how this works. So, um, if you go to um, settings and if you go to extensions, um, it's uh, this one here. Now I've got, already got it installed. If you don't, then you can go to Open Chrome Web Store down at the bottom here and search for it and that will get it um, open for you. So this is what it looks like, um, this gray button up here. So if I just put in a website, let me just... Um, this one and what it'll do is when you go into a website then it will get a little number on it up here if they've got any pixels installed so you see this has got two it's fired two events from the pixel so they've got a page view um, that has come up and likewise if I then click on uh, I pick on a product, it's fired another few events there because I've actually clicked into the product because they have got a event code on clicking on products as well. So it's view content and page view. So it's just really useful. You can check whether you've got one on your website or not. It also shows you whether it's firing properly because sometimes you get error messages up here. Um, and you can actually look at other websites as well and see where they've got them on. It just helps you understand how the pixel data actually works. So the way you set up Facebook uh, Pixel is through Business Manager and through data sources. It is fairly straightforward to do, um, but it does give you three different options of how you can do it. Um, you can get the code and add it to your website yourself if you're that tech savvy, um, or it does have um, a lot of plugins for some of the most popular website building software, such as Squarespace and WordPress. Um, or it gives you coding that you can actually send in an email to your web developer for them to add it for you. So there is a basic code, like I said, which goes on every page, which just picks up page views. But what you also need to add is your events in Events Manager. And this is also quite easy to do. I'm just going to show you an example of how to do that. Um, This here. So uh, this is uh, my pixel um, on my website, and I've just been. This is Business Manager, and it's data sources, and this will show up all the different pixels that you've got. So this is under my Business Manager, a couple of clients there. Um, and when you're in it, it's got this Add Events button. So all you do is click that, um, and you press from the pixel.
This is working when I tested it earlier today at school. Um, so anyway, this was worked before technology. Great. Bear with me. So open event setup tool, and then you just put your website in. And basically what you do is you just add an, um, this track new button and it highlights everything on your web page that can be tracked. So if I wanted people, uh, if I wanted to track when people click this section of a website, I could do that. If I wanted people to do this one, I could do that. All the different pages up here. I've already got one on this one here and I've got one on um, my contact form at the bottom, so that's where they're not highlighted, but that's as easy as to do. So if I just click that one there, select an event, so I want, there's all these different options depending on what the button is. So really for this one, it would just be view content. Um, I don't need a value in because um, it's not a value, and you just click confirm. And that's it. And then when you go back in, to this then you can test the events that you just set up um, and it'll kind of show you them. That's the simple, that's how easy it is to do. Now, Having said all that, um, there is a bit of a spanner in the works at the moment, which has been threatening to be coming for the last, I think, maybe four or five months. Uh, the new Apple um, operating software, iOS 14, is bringing in um, an option that will uh, it'll be a pop-up that happens when people visit websites and apps um, and where they can say their data has been tracked and they can opt out of it. So if they do do that, it's going to make things a bit more difficult for the pixel um, to get that information back to Facebook. Now, while this isn't everybody, because obviously not everyone has Apple devices, it is going to be a huge number of people. However, Facebook have been working on ways around this issue. And there are two things that they're asking people to do that will help. So the first thing is, is you verify your website domain and you do this from within Ads Manager. And that's quite simple to do. And then the second thing is to set up what's called conversions API. And that's another way that the um, data is sent from websites um, to back to Facebook alongside the pixel. Um, when you go into Ads Monitor, you'll get a prompt. You might have seen it popping up when I was in there. And um, there's actually a prompt at the top saying that these changes are coming and these are the things you need to do. And there's actually a resource center that Facebook has set up to help businesses through these changes. Um, now, this could be a session itself, so I'm going to leave that there, but just be aware that this is happening. And these are the two things that you need to do um, as soon as you can, if you're going to be running out to mitigate some of the problems that this iOS 14 changes uh, are, are going to happen. And actually, I've just heard in the last couple of days that the next iOS 14 update, um, iOS 14.5, is likely to land next week. And this is the version that will include this prompt. So there are going to be some changes happening until it actually comes in. People won't know what uh, the extent of these changes are going to be and how it's going to affect the data coming and how it will affect ads that are running. So just keep an eye on that. Um, you'll be aware of it. Um, and obviously, Facebook are going to be working hard to make sure that um, their ads aren't affected because they don't want their money to be uh, affected, people paying for ads. 
So just check that out. And like you say, you'll see links, you'll see a prompt when you go into our monitor that say you need to be aware of this and make these changes. Okay, does anybody have any questions about that so far? There's none in the, the chat function, uh, Danielle. So uh, if anybody, that, for example, their mic's not working or they don't want to ask, just put it under the chat and I'll pick it up kind of, uh, after each section. Okay. All right, I'll go on then. Okay, so next, um, I'm going to just look through the different places or the different ways that you can actually set up Facebook and Instagram apps. The first thing I'm going to talk about is boosting posts. I think this is the one that everyone's most familiar with if you've got a business page on Facebook. Um, it always pops up when you've got a, at the top, it gives you a notification saying this post is performing better than every other post and spend this amount of money to reach this so many people. So this is the boost and this is the easiest way. So a Facebook boosted post is just like a regular Facebook post, except you're spending a lot of money to promote it to people who would not normally see your organic <laughs> posts or content. It's the simplest form of a Facebook ad and you can create one in just a few clicks. I think everyone's probably done this at least once. Um, it's very hard to get away from when you're on Facebook and it is very tempting to do and it's very easy to do. So if you haven't done it before, um, you'll see against it, you either get a prompt from Facebook to do it or you'll see on your posts, it's this boost post at the bottom. So again, I'm just going to go into Facebook here. This is my long neglected um, food blog. Um, and just go down. So when you go into Boost Post, this here is what it brings up. So it gives you a preview of what your ad's going to look like. And there's a few different options you can choose. It used to be years ago, boosting posts used to have very few options whatsoever. It was just basically, this is the post and you boost it and it would get in front of like more people. But they've actually changed it so there's more options now. So it's not a bad way to do it. Um, so first of all, you check your goal. Um, now, there's an automatic goal here, um, which Facebook then will choose what the best goal is based on your settings. Um, but you can change that and you can have these are the two goals, like getting more engagement. So that's getting your ad in front of people who are most likely to react, comment and share, or to get your ad in front of people who are more likely to send a message um, to you. So they're the two options. Yeah, then, Daniel, can I ask a question? In terms of that goal, the automatic, mm -hmm. no, in terms of that setting, which, which is, this when people come to the, even the boost, which is the best and I suppose, what, what, what's the most efficient and effective? So I think it's always down to testing because you don't know, but I would always maybe um, so not select the automatic one because it really depends what, um, it depends what the actions have been on your Facebook page. Um, for instance, if you've had a post on your Facebook pages that are doing really, really well, and not the one that you're going to boost, but say another one, but it could have been a meme or a funny joke. Yeah. It was nothing related to your business. Mm -hmm. So it's done really, really well, but it's not actually to do with your product or service. So if Facebook takes that data to then get a post, which is to do your product service in front of, it's yeah. not necessarily getting the right people. Okay. Do you know that kind of way? Because it's taking data from something that wasn't necessarily related. So it, dep yeah. it really yeah. depends on, um, you know, what you've got on your page and, you know, how, what the type of people content. are. Yeah, basically. Uh -huh. And, um, I think some people as well might have followers on their page that are not necessarily. This is the other thing about having your organic content right as well, is that people might have a lot of followers on their page that maybe aren't their right customers because they yeah. might have added, you know, we all do it when we set a business page. We invite all our friends to like it, to get it a bit of a boost. But maybe some of those friends aren't your right customers. So that kind of sways things off as well. I'll be talking more about audiences and stuff later, but um, I would always maybe kind of select these two. You can try automatic and see what results it gives you, but I would always not do the automatic and go with these because you know then you've got more control that you know this yeah. is definitely what they're going to go for. Yeah. Um, but it's always about testing and always about looking at the data once you've run an ad to see what's working and what isn't. Oh, that's great. 
Um, so the next stage then is the button um, that you can choose. So this is your call, um, your call to action really. So this send message or send WhatsApp message. Um, let me see if I do more engagement. Buttons. No, change. See if they're the only two ones you can have. This specialized category, you don't really need to worry about that too much. There's, there's certain specialized categories um, which you can see here, which are like elections, political figures, like campaigns. Um, that's a whole different thing. So you have to worry about that if you're a normal business. Um, and then, uh, so yeah, these, these button labels are very limited compared to Ads Manager and even to Ads Center, which we're going to go on to next. So the audience then, it does give you a few options. So we've got people um, who like your page and then people who like your page and their friends. This here is basically one that I set up um, yesterday when it was just trying this out. So um, these are your custom audiences that you can create yourself based on demographic, demographic information and um, interests and stuff like that. So it does give you some options here that you can do that. Um, and that's just easy to create new ones there and it takes you into the audience tool, which I'll be showing in a while. Um, so it does give you quite a few options, but not as many um, as you would get in Ads Manager. You can't do as specific advertising as you can there. So next, then you just choose your duration and um, your budget. Um, and then basically the placements, you've only got two different placements, uh, three different placements you can choose. So here, because we're not looking for messages, so it's not Messenger. So just Facebook and Instagram, and that'll be the Instagram feed, not stories. Um, and that's it. That's how easy it is. You just then would select, right, that's fine, happy with that, please post now. Um, And what, one thing to note is that um, you really need to check that your post is right because once it's running, um, a boosted post can't be edited. So if you've got a typo or anything like that, um, you can't go in and change it. You'd have to basically switch the whole thing off and start again. Um, whereas you can edit ads in other, um, in Ads Manager and things like that. Uh, so that's it. That's how easy it is to boost a post. Um, and as I've just said to Brian there as well, always check the analytics afterwards to see how the post performed and whether it was doing what you wanted it to do or not. And it's always good to get that information back for the next time you run one. Now the equivalent on um, Instagram to boosting a post is the promote button. So you'll see this either on, if you're on your grid feed on Instagram, it's this little promote button here. You've got a, a business account or a creator account. Um, you'll also have it in your profile page. It'll be up at the top um, as, as a promotions button. From there, um, if you click that, it brings up this option. So this is your goal and you've got three different goals. So you've got more profile visits, more website visits or more messages. This more profile visits, um, you can't do that on um, Ads Manager over on Facebook. Um, this will send people to your Instagram profile. So if that is what your goal is for an ad, then definitely do this within um, Instagram. Then once you've selected your goal, um, you can select your audience. Um, so you've got automatic, so Instagram, if you select this one, Instagram automatically targets people that's similar to your followers you've already got, or you can create your own. Again, this is similar to what we've just seen there is where you base it on demographic information so you can do a bit more um, specific targeting of people. The next thing you do then is just set your budget and duration. These just sliders, so again, very easy to do. Um, and then that's it. There's only two options of placement on Instagram, um, the feed or the stories. If you do choose the option to put it in stories, this is where if you've got a link, so say to visit your website, you get the swipe up function that normally you need 10,000 followers to do. But if you're paying, you get this for free. It comes with it. So um, that's kind of quite handy to know. 
And if you've got a story running already, you can choose to actually promote the story rather than a post. And to do this, um, you select these three buttons at the bottom and then promote. And then this takes you back to what we've seen before. Um, you'll get back into this where you select your goal, your audience, etc. So it's really straightforward um, to do that as well. One thing to note with promoting stories is you can't promote anything that's got a clickable element on it. So if you've got hashtags, if you've got other people's posts that you've shared, if you've got quizzes, polls, et cetera, it won't allow you to promote those. So this, for instance, this is just an example I screenshotted from my phone. Um, it, it wouldn't let me promote this because I'm asking a question, so people will be able to click that. So just bear that in mind if you are um, going to use that. So both very straightforward, boosting and promoting posts. Um, like I say, if you do want to send people to your profile on Instagram, this is the only way you can do that. You can't do that through Ads Manager on Facebook. So if that's your goal, definitely do it from within here. They're both very easy to do, both very simple, um, but they do tend to be slightly more expensive than using Ads Manager. Um, and they are limited in terms of the targeting you can do in the different placements. So does anybody have any questions about boosting or promoting posts? Still no questions in the in the, 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 the chat function, Danielle. So okay. Yeah. I'll just move on. Okay, the next way you can um, set up ads is through Ad Center. Um, when you're on a business page, you'll see this in the left hand column, so it's very easy to get to. I'll just um, come in and show you this one again. So if you go down, it's just here, basically. And also, it starts, um, it's also started showing up here as well um, in a box. Um, if you click any of these, that's, that'll take you through to Ad Center. So this is what it looks like. Now it shows here that there's no ads activity. Now I haven't done any ads on this actual account, but um, even if you had, if you did them through Ads Manager, they won't show up here. The only thing that shows up here is ads that you've created on Facebook or within Facebook itself. So this usually means boosted posts. So don't panic if you go in and it's not showing the ads and you've actually run one through Ads Manager, that's why. So Ad Center is more basic than Ads Manager, but it does give you more options in boosting a post. It was brought in by Facebook to make it easier to create ads. And it's a very step-by-step -step process as with boosting a post. It gives you all the same options of boosting a post, but with more goals. And if you have your Instagram um, account linked to your Facebook page, you will also get the option to boost an Instagram post from within here. I don't have mine linked up, but it's just another option, one of these boxes. Um, and you can choose the creative. Um, so yeah, that's the other difference from boosting a post is you actually can choose the creative. Uh, if I just go into this and show you. Um, so it says you can choose an ad creative here, so you can change this if you want to, it just pulls one in, or you can use a post, whereas with boosting a post, it's just the, the post creative that you can use, so that's one of the differences. Um, everything else is pretty much the same um, in terms of audiences, uh, the same. The, one of the other differences here is the duration. You can choose to run the ad continuously, where you can't do that with a boost post. You've got to select how many days and an end date. But you can actually choose this to run for a daily budget if you want to. Um, but with this simplicity um, does come limitations. It's very good if you're short on time or not very tech savvy and you're not too worried about budget. It's a very um, simple, straightforward, step-by-step -step process to follow, but you can't do super tight targeting like you can do through Ads Manager. And you can't edit what your creative looks like for different placements. So whatever picture you have here, as you can see this one, it looks great there, but actually this is how it's going to look and it's actually cut off. And I can't edit that um, for different placements. I have to edit it or then it might look not right on other places, which you can do with an ad monitor, which I'm going to show you to do in a minute. Um, it can also work out a bit more expensive than ads monitor. 
Um, now it does allow you to create automatic ads. Um, if I go back here, it says create automatic ads. Now what this does is it goes a series, it asks you a series of questions. Again, based, based on previous history on Facebook. So it asks questions about your business and your audience. Um, but they are quite limited and therefore you aren't giving the Facebook algorithm in-depth knowledge it needs to find the right people to show your ad to. Um, as I said before with the boosting book, there's no harm in testing out this option. Um, but it could be a bit random in terms of the people that it's uh, going to target. So I think it's better not to use this option and to choose your goal and try and get your audiences a bit more targeted by using the audience, the custom audience tool. So as I mentioned um, before, the ad center is slightly more expensive than ads manager. To really run website purchases, you're looking at 15 pounds a day minimum. Um, so it is quite expensive given that you can't get that super tight targeting um, that you can on um, ads manager. So ads manager definitely is the best place to create your ads. Um, so we're going to take a look at that now. But before I move on, is there any questions about either boosting, promoting or ad center? The, the, there's a, a wee question in the chat there from Orla. Okay. Mm -hmm. And you know, and it says, can I have some explanation about the types of businesses that would consider using ads and why product versus services? What is the right budget for these types of different businesses? And also whether there's a reason to do this for local based businesses as opposed to local print ads and stuff like there. But I suppose maybe the first couple of points uh, in terms of uh, product versus services, you know, is there any consideration about ads and why? And I suppose maybe uh, uh, one in terms of the type of budget, maybe mm -hmm. you know, a small, medium-sized business could sure. should or could set a say. Yeah, um, I will be going on to budgets and stuff later on as well, so I'll not, I'll not preempt that. But um, in terms of products, uh, products or service-based businesses, either um, because. We're, when I, when I go on to Ads Management next, you'll see there are ways of targeting and choosing goals that are either based on products, so getting sales on actual physical products, the website purchases, or there's ones where you can have um, optimized for getting leads and stuff like that, or sending people to blogs. Um, so it's it's really either. Um, it really does depend. It's, it, it's not really a type of business. It depends on what your goal is from that business, um, which will kind of make more sense when I go on to the next bit. In yeah. terms of budget, um, ideally, um, if you're going to run a good ad campaign, you're looking at maybe £10 per day per audience. Um, but I do have some tips later on that if you don't have a huge budget, how you can get the best out of Facebook advertising, um, you know, instead. Because I know a lot of people do not have that type of money or they might don't want to invest that type of money. The advantage it has over print advertising is that um, you can really choose your targeting through Facebook and Instagram ads. When you put um, an ad in a paper, um, yes, people are going to see that paper, but you don't know whether they're the types of people that you want to get in front of. Like lots of people buy that paper and they're not your customers. And you don't know if your customers are buying that paper. Do you know that? Danielle, if you could just unmute yourself there. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> okay, which bit did you hear the last time when I was just speaking? The, the, last, the last 20 seconds. Okay, right. So it was just like um, I was saying, you know, with Facebook and Instagram advertising, you've got the option of really um, targeting and uh, you, the right customer. So you're not wasting ads money because you're making sure it's getting in front of the right people. Whereas you really you don't know when you pay for an ad in a paper or say do a leaflet drop a lot of that is wasted money in a way because you know you don't know who's going to see that you don't know if anyone's going to take an action that's going to be an awful lot of people that aren't going to take an action that's going to put it straight in the bin or whatever um so that's that's the difference now, i'm not saying that you know it should all be done facebook and instagram advertising you know your whole marketing strategy is going to be a mixture of lots of different things um 
and you shouldn't put all your eggs in one basket either. So it's just something to consider. But this does give the option of super, you know, super tight targeting if you do it right, um, and the, getting in front of people. Danielle, can I can I add to that question in terms of I suppose uh, we've recently seen I suppose people with large organic Facebook followings um, and I suppose Instagram followings, no, they they're not getting the same uh, results as they mm -hmm. used to receive. I suppose that is that a, a conscious thing from Facebook, and that I suppose if you're not paying for ads, they, they, yeah. they, they were just the I suppose the effectiveness and the the, the reach mm -hmm. of your organic posts. It's a bit of a con yeah. This is a bit of a discussion point all the time about this. Is that oh, organic reach is down, and you know this, but I've seen companies that are doing everything purely through organic reach, and it's working for them. And the problem is, is that there is no there is no black and white yes or no for this because it depends on your business it depends on your customers you know it just depends on the content you're putting out um i mean obviously facebook i think are definitely over the past few years been pushing people more to use advertising definitely um but i wouldn't say that organic um you know facebook and instagram reach is dead that you have to use advertising at all because there are still companies that are doing it really well and growing their organic you know, following without ads. Yeah. Um, but yeah, there is. I mean, there's always things changing as well. Like every time I think either Facebook or Instagram or any social media platform introduces a new feature, you'll find that things start going a bit weird with reach and the algorithm and stuff like that. For instance, when Instagram Reels came in, um, ordinary posts started not doing as well because they wanted people to use Reels. Yeah. So if you did a reel, you'd find that that was getting really great reach, but then other things weren't. So I think that happens as well with the algorithms on each of these platforms is that, you know, other things um, can kind of make that go a bit wrong as well. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. So that, that's a, that, that was the only question at that stage. Okay. No problem. I'll go back into this. Do that for... So, as manager, oh, yeah, because Facebook keeps changing its layout every so often, uh, it's a complete nightmare to keep up with. Um, I've just got the new um, page layout for my um, dream social page and I accepted yes on it. And I wish I hadn't because now I kind of can go in and they use it as a profile instead of a business page. And it, it's really confusing where everything is. So if you're ever stuck with how to get into your business manager because it keeps changing, um, this URL here is the easiest way to do it. Um, it will get you straight into business manager, which then you can get into ads manager, you can get into your audiences and everything like that. Um, so this is definitely the easiest way to do it. So I'm just going to show you what that looks like. Um, So it's just business.facebook.com and that takes you into your business manager. Um, there is business suite as well, which is really confusing and you can get into it through that. But I, I've got a business manager set up because I've got um, obviously other clients um, that I work with. And through this, and if you just click that there, um, you've got ads manager, events manager, which is uh, where your pixel um, data and everything will be sitting. Um, audiences, which is where you create all your audiences without having to do it through ads. You can, you can go and create audiences whenever you want uh, before you do an ad, um, and that's where you'll do it from there. That's your ad account settings. And then Commerce Manager is a particular thing uh, where you set up catalogs and things like that if you're an e-com business. I'm not going to go into that today, but uh, again, because that would be a whole session in itself. Um, so if I just click on Ads Manager here, this is what you get up. So I actually haven't um, run any ads yet, but this is what it looks like. And if you're like me, when I first went out to ads manager, you'd be like, oh my God, what's that all mean? Because <laughs> it's like really confusing. Um, so I'm just going to come out here. Um, there's a campaign section, ads, set and ads. Uh, and this, if I come back into my presentation. Um, this. Let me move that out of the way. 
this diagram here basically explains those three sections that you were um, looking at. So this is the anatomy of an ad build within Ad Manager. So this top level is your campaign level. Um, and here is where you'll set your ad campaign um, objective. And you can also set the budget here as well. Um, and if you do, this is what's called campaign budget optimization. It's like a lot of jargon with Facebook ads, but that's all you need to know. It just means that you're setting the budget at campaign level. Um, and what that means, if you set your budget here, um, Facebook will use that budget on anything underneath this level. Um, so getting your campaign right is very important because everything else will flow from this. The easiest way to do this is to think what your end goal is from your ad and work backwards and see which one fits best. What this means is um, Facebook algorithm will go off and take that campaign that you've chosen, your objective and your budget and use it in the best way. So for instance, if you set your budget here at £20 per day at campaign level, that is all you will spend. Um, it will not spend any more than this, no matter how many ad sets you've got onto here or how many ads you've got here, that's all that will be spent. The next set then is your ad set level, and this is where all the targeting um, that you do will come in. Um, this is where you set your audiences, the different placements you want for your ad and the schedule. Um, you can also set the budget here. So if you've not set up here, you can set it here. And if you do, this is called ABO, which is Ad Set Budget Optimization. So by setting your budget here at this level, um, it will be based on your different ad sets and the budget will be spent at anything below these. But if you've got two ad sets, you would have a budget set here and a bit of budget set here. And then these ads will be taken out of this side this ad set and these ads will be taken out of that one. So for instance, if you've got £10 here set for this ad set and you set say £20 for this ad set, the overall budget is £30 per day, um, but you'll spend no more than that. Um, and this is true of however many ads you've got below here. So the next level down is your ads level. This level is your actual um, ads that will be showing up in people's feeds and on Instagram, etc. cetera. Um, you don't set any budget here. Um, and I think this is where sometimes people get confused because they think you've got more than one ad running, it's gonna cost you more money, but that's not necessarily the case. You could have four ads here at this ad level. And if you've set your budget here or here, it will only spend the amount of money you've set up here. Um, and I would always suggest you've got more than one ad running so that um, the Facebook algorithm can test which one's doing better. So you could test maybe two different um, creative pictures, videos against each other, or you could um, have the same uh, creative and test different copy to see what's working better. And it gives Facebook something to work with um, to see what's working. You could test two different audiences. That's the other thing you can test as well. So you'll never pay per ad, you'll only pay per campaign or per ad set. Um, so you can't, like I just said before, this, this um, diagram only just shows two ad sets and two ad levels, but you can have as many of these as you want, um, depending on your budget. Is there any questions about this before I move on? There's none on the chat, Daniel, so okay. yeah, if you want to keep going. No problem. So choosing the right campaign objective is key. Choosing the right campaign objective, as I said before, has a direct impact on your results. If you don't choose the right one for what you want to achieve, you're basically telling Facebook to go off and do the wrong thing. If you want sales, you don't want people being shown your ad that have never before clicked on an ad and purchased anything. So think about what you're really trying to achieve with your ad and work backwards from that. There are three categories um, of objectives when you go into Ads Manager. So there's awareness, consideration, and conversion. Within awareness, you've got two options, brand awareness and reach. 
these two here are basically to get your ad or your company in front of more people, more eyes um, on it, raising awareness. It's fairly um, self-explanatory. These are really only good to use if you've got a bigger budget um, and a large sales funnel, because these would really be coming to your cold audience at the top. Um, you just want to you know, get people's eyes on things. So a bit like a boost post in a way. Um, and then the next one under consideration is a traffic option. Um, this objective is if you want to send your audience somewhere. So for instance, you want to take them on a journey from A to B, where A is either Facebook or Instagram, and B would most of the time more than likely be your website. Now it is possible that you could generate sales through this option. Um, and it is a slightly cheaper option than anything sitting in the conversions uh, category. But really, that's just a lucky outcome um, because what Facebook's really going to be doing is sending people or finding people who are link clickers. So they want to click on and go somewhere, but they're not necessarily purchasers. Now, it might be some of them will go and click on your website and actually purchase, and that's great, but that's not what um, Facebook is trying to find uh, people to do. They're not really finding people apart from people that link click to go from A to B. The engagement objective is if you want to get more engagement on a post. Um, so either a like or a comment or a share, things like that. Um, or event responses. This is a great way um, actually to get social proof on a post first. Um, so if a post is performing well um, and it's got lots of likes and engagement, uh, likes and shares, comments, etc you know that that's popular with your audience. So using that then in an ad, um, you know that it's also gonna work well in an ad. So it's kind of, it'll save you um, probably a bit of budget because um, you're already confident that it's gonna perform quite well. Um, so underneath this one are three different options. And one of them is page like, and this is useful if you've just started your business page and you want to get some initial likes. Um, it's better than asking friends and family because they might not be your right customers or your right audience. Um, so it is um, good to do that, but make sure that you've got some good quality posts on your page before you actually run an ad on it because you don't want people coming to the page and there's nothing there for them to engage with or to see. Um, app installs, that would be if you're an app developer, so that would be the only reason you would choose that one. Um, video views, again, fairly obvious what that one's for. This would be if you're looking to get more views on a promotional video you've done or say an awareness campaign which involves videos. Um, the next one then is lead generation. Um, this will actually be a good one to do. Um, sorry, sit back on video views. If you do choose this one, what you can also do then is that um, you can catch and retarget people with another ad that maybe have watched a portion of your video or all of your video. So you can retarget these people. So that's the hands you want. Again, if you're looking at a kind of a funnel situation, so these would be kind of colder um, audience. And then you, if they've actually watched it, become a warmer audience and you can target them with different ads. Uh, lead generation is useful if you don't have a great website for capturing leads. So this would be more of your service-based businesses. Um, it keeps people on Facebook, um, but it will capture their email addresses and other information. And then you can download that data for future use. Messages campaign, again, is self-explanatory. Um, it's a way for people to send a direct message or a message a message about a product or service. This last column here, the conversion section, is the most expensive form of ads because you're asking people to give more, either to buy something or give their email address over or something like that. You're asking for a higher value action, so the ads tend to be more expensive. You can optimize your uh, events within conversions for different things. So for instance, you could optimize, you could choose a conversion objective, but you could optimize it for leads or you could optimize it for add to cart or for sales, um, different things like that. So there are options within this conversion campaign. So you need to make sure you're choosing the right one for what your end goal is. Catalog sales is a particularly good one for e-commerce businesses. These are all so-called dynamic product ads. 
these are ads that target people who have looked at your product on the website but for whatever reason didn't purchase. So as I said before, these are the ones where you've been looking at something and you've gone off it, you come back into Facebook or Instagram and you're bombarded with like that product that you've been looking at. These are the dynamic product ads and they're really useful um, to kind of retarget people. They're very clever. Um, and then store traffic, this would be if you've actually got a, a Facebook or Instagram shop, um, you would choose that one um, to drive people to there. So, uh, Danielle, would you agree that I suppose rather than jumping straight in, it's like cultivating, I suppose, your, your customers so you're getting them in. It's like any type of marketing process. And the kind of you're mm -hmm. starting from left to right. No, they're not going to jump on their sales straight no. away. You have to cultivate them. So that process kind of follows that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah, definitely. Um, and your, your organic, non-paid social media definitely um, is something you so Even if you're running ads, you need to have good organic social media as well. You need to, I mean, basically the start of everything is understanding who your customer is and, the, you know, your audience. Um, before you, you even do organic social media, it's something I would suggest people need to do is like really understand who are you trying to get to, who are you trying to build a relationship with, what yeah. are their likes and dislikes. You know, it's not just about your product. You, you need to kind of be sharing information and stuff like that that they're going to be interested in. So they will engage. Um, so, yeah, it's a whole process and, you know, big companies or brands or whatever would have a whole funnel set up with adverts, you know, where they're bringing people in at the brand awareness stage. Um, and then once they're that, they've got that audience because then they, they, they all know that those people have been engaging. So they become a warmer audience. So you kind of get them onto the next stage and the next stage. So yeah, it's, it's about building that process. It's like, a, you know, like you say, a whole process to guide them through. Um, but yeah, uh, it is, it's really about choosing the right objective. A lot of people I think have run out before and they're not really sure why it's not worked. And there are so many different elements, um, which I'll kind of show uh, shortly. But if you don't get them right, that's where it kind of falls down on. But definitely understanding your customers and your audience is the, the biggest one you can do before you start doing anything. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, so. This is just another uh, example of different uh, those different objectives and um, what the so yeah traffic. If you've written a blog and you want people to read it, definitely traffic objective is what you'd be choosing there because you're sending people from A to B uh, to do something. Reach is really just I want to create more conversation about my post. It's getting more eyes on it, getting more people to see it and know that you're there. Uh, same with engagement getting people to know that you're there, um, asking them maybe to do something like like the page, uh, things like that. So you would use that one. Conversions is always about, um, I want to send, sell my products online is the main one. But you could, like I said, you can also choose conversions optimized for leads if you want to get lead generation rather than the lead generation one. Because um, this one here is kept within Facebook, whereas conversions for leads will actually be sending people to your website. So that's the difference between um, the two of those. It is a bit confusing because you can do lead gen through both of these, but um, that one actually sends people to your website, so it's like more useful in a way. And video views is just you want people to watch a video. Is there any other questions at that stage? No, there's no questions in the chat okay. function. Okay. Do you want to take the break now, Brian, or do you want me to keep going for? Um, it's, 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 it's up to you, Danielle. Um, okay. I think, uh, we, we were talking about giving people a five minute comfort break, so mm -hmm. it's um, three, two minutes to 11 now. So, if we come back about three, four minutes past 11, right. and just give a five minutes comfort break, and we'll, we'll, we'll take it from there. Okay, no problem. All right, so uh, if we were back and probably about maybe just after, just before five past 11, right? Okay, all right, thank you. So uh, Rachel has asked a question for, um, there are lots of different options for ads, ads manager, ads creator, boosting, etc. What would you recommend for the end goal of sales and web traffic? Um, I would always recommend, if possible, that people use ads manager. 
um, purely because of the uh, targeting options it gives you. Um, it gives you far more than um, the other two. And it also gives you um, options in terms of uh, all the different places your ads can be seen. It gives you way more options than the other two as well. Um, and it's it just, it's more complicated to do, obviously, um, but it, it just has got, gives you better chance for results. And it really uses the Facebook algorithm to, you know, kind of uh, really drill down and make sure it's getting in front of the right people that are going to take the right action that you want. Um, it's just the, the, you know, the intelligence behind it is just so much better than the other two options, really. So I would always say ads manager. Yeah. And then the second part of that question was uh, also for promoting an ad, would you suggest an image, a photograph, a graphic, text, or video or moving image? Or is it a mixture of all of those and I suppose testing them? Um, it really is a mixture. Yeah, I'd say definitely test. Um, obviously, I, I'm going to come on to kind of different um, ad creative whatever uh, in a while as well but having a good image um, uh, and you can test that against a video say or you can test an image against an image or you can test an image against something that's got more text in it until recently um, Facebook did have a rule that you couldn't have more than 20% of an ad that had text on it but that's actually changed now so you can have more text but all I would say about that is, is that the more text that you've got, when you think about people being on mobile, um, it's quite a small space. You know, it's not a big area um, and, and different ad placements as well. It can be even smaller. So you really have to think about that type of thing as well. Is that what's going to catch people's eyes? And are they actually going to be able to read, um, you know, with an awful lot of text on it? But it is definitely about testing. So if you had one out that you had a, you know, if you had a, an image and you had a video, it would be great to test those two things out and see what is working better for people to engage with. Um, that's really what it's all about. Yeah. Um, thank you, Daniel. Um, that's us. That's all the questions. So again. Right. Okay. So the next section we're going to look at now is um, audiences. So Facebook Ads Manager offers three different types of audiences, um, interest-based audiences, lookalike audiences, and custom audiences. Um, audiences is another area where you really need to get this right um, or else you'll be sending Facebook off to find the wrong people. This uh, diagram here kind of explains these a bit better. <clears throat> so this first one, the biggest one here, is a cold audience. Um, so people that have never engaged with you before, um, you're just asking Facebook to go and find people. Um, and this is your interest-based audience, or what it's also called the saved audience when you go into Ads Manager. And this is the audiences we've seen before um, when we're looking at Boost Posts and Ads Centre. These are your interest-based audiences, the things that are based on demographic data, different interests people might have. Um, you know, you can really drill down as much as you want with these ones. Um, so you're setting the target in here, not Facebook. You're telling Facebook, this is the audience I want to use. Go and find people um, that are going to uh, act um, in the right way to reach my goal. Um, so the way um, this works, actually, anybody that's on Facebook, and um, Facebook is, gathers your information, as you know, like Big Brother. Um, so it's like from your online activity. So they will have information like what uh, your likes are on Facebook, you know, different pages you've liked, different groups that you're in, uh, websites you've visited that have got Pixel installed, anything that you've shared is all building up this information about you so that when you are asking Facebook to find people from within these audiences, that's how they've got information on people and that's where they'll um, get it from. So because you're setting the targeting, this is where you really need to understand your audience um, and, uh, you know, do the work before you kind of set these audiences up to really understand who it is you're trying to reach so that Facebook gets the best information to act upon. The smallest audience that you're likely to have, which this one here, is your custom audience, <clears throat> and this is your only warm audience. So this is people that have already engaged with your business. Um, and this is about retargeting um, those people with your ads. So it's basically people that have um, either engaged with your Facebook or Instagram account, your page and your account. Um, 
it's the people that have actually taken a certain action on your website if you've got pixel installed so people that have visited your website this can also include your own customers so for instance if you've got a mailing list you can uplo upload that to facebook in ads manager um, and they can target those people people have watched your videos people have used your app if you have an app um, people have completed a lead form on facebook People, if you've had an event before, you can target people who've engaged with an event um, or people have opened or clicked on an instant experience within Facebook. So the possibilities are, there's just loads of them basically that you can use in this warm audience um, to retarget people. Now, what you can also do then uh, with this audience, it allows you to create this middle one, which is called a lookalike audience. Now, again, this is a cold audience, but it's not as cold as this one because what it does is Facebook uses data points from your warm audience to find people for you that look like people in your warm audience. So for instance, if you've got in this warm audience people that visited your website, Facebook will find people that look like people that visited your website. Now you need a minimum of 100 people in this custom audience uh, to create a lookalike audience. Facebook will keep uh, learning as well. So it's not that you've got 100 people and it stops there and creates it. Then, because obviously people will carry on visiting your website and will be added to this warm audience. So that Facebook will continually um, add to this audience as well and it will keep learning. Um, so the, what happens is, is that as you go along, the better your look like audience will become because it will have more data to work off. And the data updates every 24 hours. Uh, these lookalike audiences can be really useful um, and essentially it's saving you doing as much work as with the cold interest-based audiences uh, because you're getting Facebook to do the hard work for you because they're finding the people that are going to match. So what is important is um, there's a thing called layering the audience um, when you're actually doing a saved audience. Uh, you can actually, this is the same as well when you're doing um, lookalike audiences as well. Uh, what this means is, is that um, here you can see uh, this audience has been set up. Um, so we've got locations set up here, age, and we've got people who match these interests, um, this job title and their parents, so all parents. Now what happens is, is if you've got an audience like this, Facebook will go away and find people that match any one of these. So if, for instance, my ideal customer was a mom who likes running, um, that's great. But what will happen here is, is that Facebook will find anybody that's a parent, anybody that's a runner as a job title, job title and has any of these interests. So I'm not necessarily going to get moms that like running because I've not specified that. I've just put all these very general things in. So I'll be getting people that run marathons, people that aren't parents, people that aren't mums, they might be dads, etc. cetera. Um, so that's not the best way to do it because it's not asking Facebook to do exactly what you want. So instead on this uh, left-hand side is a better way of doing it. So I've got all the same interests in again um, and job title. Um, but here I've, I've said they must have all these interests, but they must also be a parent. Now, if it was mums I was looking for, I would actually specify that it would be mums because I would have female in as well. Um, so this is what's called layering. So you, you basically it has to be matching this and that, not just matching any of these. If you can see what the difference is there. What you can also do, do then um, layering is you can exclude people. So if I was building a lookalike audience and it would say if websites purchases um, or whatever, if it was a particular product I was doing an ad for, I wouldn't want to show it to people that had done a purchase in say the last seven days or two weeks, because what's the point of doing that? They've just bought from me, I don't need that there. So what you would do when you were building that audience is you would exclude people that have bought in the last seven days, so they're not seeing the advert. Uh, so that's what layering is. And it's important to kind of do that because it really allows to be very specific with your targeting and make sure Facebook's not going off to find the wrong people.
So this is just some suggested audience sizes for um, some of the most popular campaigns that you might be running. If you're looking at an engagement campaign, ideally you're looking at over 10,000 people. Um, if it's a custom or a warm audience, you can be a lot smaller than that because they're like more likely to engage because they're already engaged with you before. <clears throat> it can be quite small because you're more likely to get results from this because um, going off to find somebody on Facebook or Instagram that's either liked a post or commented on a post or whatever, it's quite easy because most of us do that every day. Um, so that's why it can be quite small um, in terms of audience size. For a traffic campaign, then you're looking at over 20,000. Again, if it's a warm audience, it can be a bit smaller. Again, slightly bigger than engagement because you're actually asking people to usually click on a link to go somewhere. So again, the people that do that would be slightly smaller than those that might just like or do an emoji on something. For conversions campaign, um, you're looking at over 50,000, but ideally you want to have 50, 500,000 to a million um, especially if you've got a higher price point on a product or you've got a longer funnel in place because it's going to be harder to find those people that are going to convert because the amount of people that actually go and buy through Facebook is a lot smaller than just people that would engage on a post. So you need a bigger pool of people to target and work with um, to do the work to reach them. Does anybody have any questions at that point? There, um, there's none in the in the chat function, Danielle. So okay. No. Right. So once you've selected your campaign and you've selected your audience, the next stage in ads manager and building your ad is to set your budget and placement and schedule. So the budget is fairly straightforward. Um, you can set a daily budget. Um, and you can set a start date, you can set an end date. Um, you can actually uh, also set a budget here. Um, you can set a, a lifetime budget as well. So if you didn't want to set a daily budget, um, you can set a lifetime budget. And the difference between these um, is uh, really a uh, lifetime budget is slightly easier um, if you don't want to be going and checking all the time how much is being spent because it'll start facebook will stop feeding out once you've hit that amount of money um, a daily budget you either have to set an end date or you want to go in and you know be checking all the time to make sure that you don't overspend um, again this will be the budget um, that you previously selected if you were doing campaign level or ad set level and um, this would uh, relate to that. With the placements then, um, you can do automatic placements, um, which is again, like all the other automatic stuff, Facebook will decide what they think is the best place for your um, ads to be. Uh, you can do this, uh, there's no harm in doing it at all, um, but there's just a couple of things really that you should consider. So I would, I would usually, when I'm doing ads, I would kind of go into edit placements. Um, and I'm just going to show you uh, what that looks like. So yeah, this is um, when you come to the placements, automatic placements, that, that's just it, you've selected. If you go into manual placements, it gives you devices you can select. So um, all devices, you can change that. Um, now, the reason you would change that um, if, for instance, you were advertising an app, um, it's probably more than likely you want that to be on mobile only because then people can just click and install it on the mobile phone um, rather than on desktop. And again, you might have an app that looks better on mobile um, and only really is optimized for mobile viewing. So you might just select that. Likewise, the opposite of that, it might not look good on mobile, but it looks good on desktop. So you can um, either keep that as is or deselect them. So these are the different platforms that your ads will be running out to. So you've got Facebook, Instagram, Audience Network and Messenger. Now I would always um, suggest deselecting Audience Network. Um, now the reason why is this particular option here, it takes your ads off social media 
and onto other apps and certain websites. But the problem with that is it might think it's great because you're going like, oh, fantastic, it's getting onto more people. But the problem is, is that you can't control where that ad is shown. So it could be going onto apps and websites that maybe you don't want your product associated with. And you also don't know whether the audience on those apps and websites are necessarily the right people for your product. So I would usually deselect that one. So here you can see now um, whatever picture and everything you've chosen, um, it shows you all the different placements. So if I roll over these, um, it changes to show you what they're going to look like, which is really handy and what you can't do with, ad, uh, with boosting our ad center. So it kind of shows you all the different, what they're going to look like, all the different placements. So you can see whether that creative is all right or not, or whether you need to edit it for different placements. Um, the only one here that I, again, would probably deselect are in article. Um, this is where the ads will show up in articles that people are reading. Um, and again, like with audience network, you aren't guaranteed, you can't know where they're going to show up. Um, so it could be an article that is actually not related to your uh, business at all and you don't actually want to be associated with and they might not be the right audience. So again, I would usually do select that one, but all of the other ones, um, you know, you can uh, look through these yourself or whatever. It's always good to have come into ad manager to walk around. You can't break anything. Um, and it just uh, gives you all the different placements and what they look like in each one. So that's that. So in terms of the ads formats, um, we talked about it for the different ones you can do. So there is, uh, there's three different types of format you can do within Ads Manager. You can have a carousel ad, which is basically two or more scrollable images or videos. You've probably all seen these um, when you've seen ads on Facebook anyway. So you've got different pictures and you can kind of move uh, through them. A single image or video, or you can have a slideshow with multiple images as well um, if you didn't have a video. And then the collection, which is kind of, this is more, uh, I think you've seen it where it's like an e-com and it's like a catalog shot or whatever. So when you click on it, it stays within Facebook, but it gives you a full screen. It looks like it's in a separate website um, to expand all these different um, options here. So again, these are options um, if you boost or use Ad Center. So Ad Manager always gives you more options. So this is um, basically what uh, your ads will look like on the main three areas. So this is your Facebook newsfeed, this is your Instagram newsfeed, and this is your story. So like I've just said, it's really important to check what your creative is going to look like on each of these and what your text is going to look like because each one, um, you know, shows different bits. And this is important as well for uh, when you're writing kind of headlines and copy because some placements show more or less than others. So it's important to bear that in mind. And oh, and it's definitely um, a good idea to edit um, your creative probably for each placement uh, to really get the best out of them. So is there any questions at that stage? None, none in the chat. Okay. So the next stage then, I'm just I'm going to basically talk about what makes the Facebook ad work. Um, as I said before, there is no black and white answer to this. Um, there's lots of different variables and it is always about testing. Um, I can't say to you, you know, this is the hack that every time you do an ad, this is the way it's going to work because that's just not the case as you probably uh, understand a bit by now. So there's definitely um, your targeting, which is getting your audiences right um, and telling Facebook the right thing to do, um, getting the campaign right, getting the objective right. Having a scroll stopping image is definitely important. And having some inspiring headline that's gonna catch people by and want them to engage and having some engaging copy. And then budget is obviously, um, unfortunately, one of the uh, options as well um, that's gonna combine to make the thing work. So 
Let me just see this. This is um, Facebook ads uh, work on an auction process. And this is kind of the equation that gives you the total bid value for your ad. So here you've got basically what's called the advertiser bid, which this is just basically how much uh, budget you're putting into your ads. Um, and then this is multiplied by the estimated action rates. So this is the likelihood of getting the desired outcome um, that you've asked Facebook to get you. Then this is added to that is your user value. Um, so this basically is um, Facebook aim really is to keep people happy and keep people on the platform. They don't want people going off to Twitter because they don't like Facebook um, and things like that. And therefore, what they want is high quality um, ads. And they want, um, if you're sending them to a website, that that website is a good quality website. And they want, if people are going to your organic Facebook page, that it's good quality. And um, that's basically what it is. And they want also as well to make sure you're targeting the right people. So it has to be relevant to your audience. So this is all of your user value. Um, so definitely your organic Facebook uh, quality comes in here. Um, if you've got that going well and you've got an engaged page and it's consistent and you're posting quality content, this comes under user value. And then that gives you your total bid value. So what this does mean is, is that it is possible that if you have got this bit right and your user value right, um, that even if you have a smaller budget, you can still get a higher bid value than somebody that's got maybe a bigger budget, but these two things are rubbish. Um, so it's not all about the budget. Um, you know, you, got, you can actually make your bid value higher by getting these other things right as well. So that's important to remember. You need to make, um, a, to make a good campaign, a great campaign, you need to be specific and you need to speak directly to your audience. So as I've said like several times before, it really is about getting understand who your audience are. Um, and sometimes this is about testing. Um, so you're not gonna get it right first time. Great if you do, but it's always about testing. Now the Facebook algorithm, the way that it works is, um, you need to understand how it works. Um, it's 70% really of getting things right is understanding how the algorithm works and giving it what it wants and 30% skill. Um, so this is a big thing to kind of understand. Firstly, you need to tell it what you want it to do. Um, so it's picking the right campaign objective uh, for the results you want to see. And this is the same wherever you run your ads from. You need to make sure you're getting the objective right for your end goal. Secondly, you need to, need to make sure you're targeting the right audience and also the right sized audience. By getting your audience right, you won't be wasting ad spend on the wrong people and you're teaching the algorithm who your ideal, ideal customer is. Um, you need the right people, but you also need enough of them. So essentially, as we've seen before, the bigger they ask, the bigger the audience needs to be. So for sale, you definitely need a bigger audience than if it's just an engagement campaign. Um, you need to be realistic with your budget. Um, as we've seen, Facebook has worked in an auction process. You're essentially bidding against other people for space on the news feed or whatever placement you choose. So as I said previously, I suggest 10 pounds per day per audience. It's the minimum you're looking at to run a really good campaign so you can test. You need to create a good user experience. Um, so think mobile first for your website, have it fast loading. The landing page that you're sending them to should be relevant to the ad. So if it's for a product, you don't want them going to a page which is nothing to do that product and you have to search around for it, things like that. And have minimal distractions on your landing page. Just give them one action to take. If it's a lead page, you're just asking somebody to sign up for something, only have that on the page. Don't have other options like, you know, to book something else or look at this other thing. Just one thing to make it nice and clear for them to do. Um, you must also stick to the rules. Facebook has strong ad policies and you must stick to them. And you also need to make sure you stick into the relevant legislation from within the country that you're in the ads in. So you can find all the Facebook ads policies at this uh, URL here. Um, it's really handy to check those before you do anything as well. Uh, just so it gives it, 
give you more chance of not having your ads rejected before they even start running, basically. So definitely check that out. But some general rules are always use positive language. So no negativity, it always has to be positive. No swearing. You can swear in your organic post if you want to. That's the thing that you do, but you can't do it in ads. Um, you can't do any before and after shots in ads either. If it's like for weight loss uh, products or anything like that or fitness. You can't refer to anyone's personal attributes, so things like race or religion. Um, you can't promote any um, multi-level marketing companies. Uh, and obviously, you can't promote any get-rich-quick schemes either. Is there any questions now at this stage? There's just a couple of questions back in, uh, on the previous section, Daniel. Um, one from Orla, if I can't edit my ad after I put it up, how do I make sure it looks right beforehand? I think on, there's a there's a, there's a a preview section on it. Yes, right. there is, yeah. If, um, you can edit your ads um, all in Ads Manager, um, but I'll kind of, I'll, there is a slight problem with doing that after it's running, which I'll go on to um, kind of in the next bit. Um, but yeah, in each, no matter where you run your ad from, it does preview it at the side. So um, if I just come out of this and I'll go back into ads. So ads manager here, this shows you if you scroll over. So for instance, that's what it's going to look like in your Facebook newsfeed. Um, so if you looked at that and went, oh God, that doesn't look right for whatever reason, you can kind of edit it then. Um, so they, it always previews what they're going to look like. So it's always worth checking. And you get another option then as well. When you go through to the next stage, before you click let the ad run in, it'll show you what it's going to look like again. So there's a couple of times you can do that. Um, same with this as well. If you go in, um, it lets you, it gives you a preview of the ad. And the same with boosting, you can get a preview as well. So you've got a chance to change it before it runs. Okay. Um, and there was another one, uh, and if you want to stay in the ad manager, mm -hmm. it's relevant from Rachel. Um, so a rectangular ad shape for Instagram stories, will this crop then on an Instagram feed and a Facebook news feed? Um, you can have, what you do is you can edit um, for, if you have it set up for Instagram stories, um, for instance, let's see, um, when you add your creative, these, these are just bringing through random creatives, there's nothing to do with what I put up here, but when you go into um, your creative, let's see. If I put this like this up, oh, okay. We can send more information, I suppose. Yeah, no, so, no what it is, is uh, when, you, when you upload um, an image, you can, it, it gives you the option to kind of change it. It's because I've not got any images uploaded here because I just did this to test okay. to get into Ad yeah. Manager. Um, but you can upload different images for different places. Right. So it's not that they're just going to take one image. And, I mean, it will. If you've only got one Im image up there, it will crop it and it will look right for everything yeah. that you're doing. But you can upload different images and different videos through the different placements to make sure they're optimized and look yeah. best for those placements as well. Perfect. I think, yeah. I, yeah, I think that answers the question. Yeah. Thanks. Uh, and no, no other questions on that particular okay. section. So this thing here, people scroll on average 300 feet per day. I think some days I might be a bit more than this, but that's the average that people do. So when you think of that, that's an awful lot of scrolling. Um, so when you think about your ad, um, you really need to make it stand out to get people to start that scrolling. Um, so that's what you need to be thinking about when you're thinking about the images or the videos that you're using. So this kind of uh, explains really um, you know, when you're looking at an ad this is, or a, a picture, this is what you look at first. So this is going to be your image or your video. Um, this is the bit that people see first when they're scrolling. And then they might look under here where there's like a bit of text. And then they might look onto that. Um, but finally, this is the bit 
that you'll get to at the top. That's just the way how your brain works. So that's always like useful to think about that the image is the most important bit uh, when people are scrolling. So you need um, a scroll stopping image. You need a headline, which is going to spark curiosity or action. And you need copy, which compels people to take the next step. And it all needs to work together to be relevant and engaging to them. So this is a good example here of, um, I think, a good ad. You've got an eye-catching image. It's like bright colors. Um, it's patterned. So when you're scrolling, you think about scrolling, that's really going to stand out um, in the news feed. It's got copy here that's speaking to, so it's got the attention grabbing headline. Let me just move this out the way. Um, you know, it's a, it says what it says. Claim your 30 day cannabis trial now, thousands of five star reviews. You know, that's like, oh, that sounds good. And it's a free trial, it's got free in capital letters. Um, you know, everything good there. Um, and then here it's got copy that speaks to your audience. So, you know, it's it's going to speak to everyone's interest in Canva. It's got like create beautiful designs, powerful tool, use the features that are on the premium, add the font, color palette, add that there were two million images and illustrations and much more. So it's telling you exactly what this is going to do. There's no doubt about it um, whatsoever. And if I was interested in designing um, stuff, this would definitely be speaking to me. And it's got a clear call to action. So it's just get offer. That's it. Nothing else. It's straightforward. This is this is what they're asking. This is what they're saying the ad's about, and this is how you get it. Very simple and straightforward. So a few image tips. Um, so as we just said, have bright or contrasting colours if you can. Patterns work well to break up the feed. Um, Pictures of groups of people tend to do well as well, um, but obviously make sure if you're using them that it's relevant to your audience. So if your um, ideal audience, for instance, is older people, you don't want to have like stock pictures of like say teenagers because people aren't going to stop at those because it's not going to be relevant to them. Casual shots also work quite well because they look like they would be posts from maybe your friends or family. So they kind of get people to stop on them because you're not sure whether it's an ad or not. So they, they do quite well, like, you know, not too staged. Photos that depict energy or movement. Um, so as well as videos, they always kind of tend to work well. Um, if you've got photos that depict movement, um, they also tend to kind of grab people's eyes and draw them in as well. Um, children and animals, obviously, um, we're all kind of like attracted to those, but obviously only use these if they're relevant to your uh, business, because otherwise it's just going to be a bit weird. Um, random images work well, uh, but these can also work well in a bad way because if it's something that's completely bizarre and it's not relevant to your um, company, that your your business, it kind of can put people off. It will make them stop, but it might not make people take the action then afterwards because they're going like, well, why are you showing me a picture of that? It doesn't make any sense. So just be careful with that one. Um, as I've just said, video is also another one that works well. Um, and as I've said previously as well, uh, make sure you edit uh, for, for, for the different placements where you want your ad to appear on. So make sure that they're, they're going to look right on those. So a few copywriting tips. Um, most people um, look at uh, Facebook and Instagram through their mobile phones. That's just the way it is. The majority of them do. And on mobile, um, you'll only see the first three lines of the copy at the top of the ad. So these are key. Um, you know, after that, they'll have to press more. So you need to grab them in those first three lines. So make sure they're clear. Um, and, you know, they're getting, you're getting right in there with what you want to talk about and what they are about. Questions work well um, to get the audience to self-identify. So what that means is asking questions like, uh, for instance, are you a business owner that just doesn't have time for social media? And people are going to be like, oh, yeah, that's me. I'll need to find out more about this. Or uh, do you want to do quick workouts? You can do any time from home. So if, you know, you were somebody that was looking for that, you'd be like, yeah, that's me. I want to find out more about this. <coughs> the other thing to remember is um, it's not about you. It's not about your business. It's not about your product. It's all about how your product or service can help them. So think of it from that point of view, not from the point of view trying to sell the stuff. 
um, try and solve their pain points, but do it in a positive way. Talk their language and make it easy to read. Um, a good tip with this is if you read it out loud to yourself after you've written it, is it going to make sense to them? Um, and if you might be in a quite a technical um, space or, or a technical business and you're immersed in it, <coughs> excuse me, um, try and avoid the technical language because, again, this is about them and it's going to appear on social media. You're not going in a trade magazine talking to, you know, your peers or whatever. <coughs> excuse me. So always make it easy to read. Excuse me, one Sorry about that. Um, using emojis and line breaks help um, to break up the text as well, so make them look quite well. Humour can work, um, but only if it's right for your business. <coughs> if you are talking um, to a local audience, mentioning the location can work well in your ad. Always use testimonials. They're always great to use if you've got them. Um, use them for inspiration, but you can also use them in your copy. So if you've got five star reviews, um, you can kind of click them and put them in. Um, you can put them in the text or you can actually put them on your image as well. Um, that's always a good one to do. Um, look at your testimonials. And if there's one thing that people are saying about your product or service every time when they're getting any good reviews, that's definitely something you'd want to lift out and use in your copy. <clears throat> always use one strong call to action. Um, so only get them um, do one thing at a time. Don't confuse them with asking them to do several different things. Always write for your laziest reader. Make it easy to read, easy to understand, and easy for them to understand the action you want them to take. <coughs> the one thing um, that is interesting to do is using Amazon for inspiration. You can go on there and basically look at either products or, or books about if you a service-based business, if you look for books about that topic and go and look at the five star reviews um, and see what people are saying about it and that will give you inspiration about what people that might be your same audience will be looking for from you so you can kind of get inspiration from there and basically how other people are advertising stuff on Amazon as well what they're saying about their product or service if it's similar to yours um, I would always like you know kind of look for inspiration there and as I said before it is all about testing <coughs> So, is there any questions at that stage? There, there, there's no, no, no new ones in the in the chat thing, yeah. I'm surprised my throat held out this long. Actually, <laughs> excuse me for coughing. So this is just uh, some examples now. Some um, These are some good adverts that I've just kind of picked out. And there are examples of different types of adverts as well. Um, so this one here uh, for the boot body, I think we've probably all seen this, either on Facebook or Instagram or on television or whatever. But um, this is an example of a carousel ad. So they've got a few different pictures that you would scroll through. Um, but it's just a very, very simple advert. It tells you exactly um, what it does. So dirty boots will never be the same. It's a must-have, portable cleaner, toughest dirt. Um, it, the picture shows exactly what it does. You're in no doubt what that is. Um, you know, it's, it's just a very, very simple ad, but very effective. Um, this one again um, is uh, a good example of how they've got everything in in the first line. So the point of the landing page is to convert this to not win design awards. And here, very simple again, make better landing pages. They've repeated that down here. So if you didn't see it there, you've got it here as well. And you just sign up. Um, so very, very simple. Um, that's what it does. This one here is an example of what um, I talked about previously. The dynamic product out. It's a good image. Um, like I said before, it's quite a casual shot. It shows the person with the actual product. Um, 
but they've actually targeted this at people that actually obviously added to car and then left and went into something else and they've just they've got it straight in there you left something in your car and they've actually offered them um a code to get a discount or but here it's a free uk delivery so that's something you can all, also do as well so this will only be delivered to people this ad will only go to people that um, added to cart and then didn't complete the purchase so it's a great way to target them with um, a special offer um, and here you go know, you forgot this get free shipping and they're asking you to shop now again <clears throat> uh, this one um, is another one. It's like a good uh, image, uh, different colors. It says in the image exactly what they're getting. So it's like get by free social media templates. It's like stop spending days on design creation, design creation, get these templates, um, build an eye catching brand in minutes. It's just very simple. So it's exactly what it's doing. And it tells you what you're getting in the image as well. So that's the first thing that you'll see. This one here is a bit of an example. It's a video ad, but it's a bit of an example of um, a random image. Um, I actually still don't have any idea what this is. <laughs> I, it's, I got this from somewhere else, um, but it definitely would make me stop if I saw it. And it would also, also make me want to see more about it because I have no clue actually what um, it is. So that is an example of how randomness can work. Um, but again, it's a bit hit and miss that one because sometimes it can be a bit too random and I, I don't think I'd be uh, their ideal customer, cause, especially because of the location and stuff like that. But it's just an example of that. Uh, this one here is uh, an example of what I was saying about the casual shots. So uh, again, with the product with them, but it's quite casual. It's not too staged, um, you know, and very, again, very simple copy. Time to recharge the batteries, get ready for the colder season. Loving these apple cider vinegar gummies. That's it. Five stars. Shop now. Very simple. <clears throat> now these are some ones that um, aren't um, very good ads. Uh, so are things that have gone wrong and why you should always check before you send your ads out. Um, even big companies uh, like this is KLM. So obviously whoever uh, was doing this um, ad uh, forgot to put in the copy here but that's actually gone out and was running um and it's had comments and shares so uh yeah definitely always check before you press click and send them out and you should be checking after they go out as well in case anything has got through and these obviously didn't even know their company uh this barclay card one um again not great in terms of uh the way they've written the copy here it's quite hard to read and i mean it's like kind of got slang in here like kind of you know FYI, great, spelt GRH, credit card offers, wait. I, I'm not sure that kind of language there is aimed at people that will be getting a credit card um, and it doesn't read very well. Um, and for accessibility, uh, if people are using screen readers, that wouldn't come out very well for there as well. The image isn't very inspiring. Uh, the text is quite small. I can't really read that very well. Um, and again, this this down here just says subject to status. It doesn't tell me anything. If I read that before I read up here, I don't, I don't know what they're offering me. Um, do you know what I mean? So yeah, not a great one. This one here, uh, again, I, I didn't actually know what this was for. Um, you can see it's for a retail center and they're actually like liking a page. So it's an engagement out to like pages. Um, up here is fine, but I think the picture, the image, it, to me, just looks like a car park. I, I wouldn't know that was a retail centre, so yeah, not a great image on this one. Uh, this one here as well, for this building services one, they've got no, um, they've got no headlines, they've got no text on sneak here, they've got no call to action, and they've put the website link on, and obviously the website's broken. So again, uh, something that went wrong there. But um, that's just examples of a few not so good adverts. Um, so I would always kind of look what's happening um, in your feed and seeing, you know, adverts made you stop on the advert. What did you find good about it? And just take inspiration from it. <clears throat> uh, another way you can do this um, before I go on to budget is if. Uh, let me just come out of this again. And if I go into Facebook, um, so if 
I just go on to <coughs> company, let me see. So if I go on to, for instance, if I'm on a company page, um, the way you can see what ads they're running, if you scroll down and you go to page transparency and click see all, <clears throat> and you scroll down here, so it's just got lots of different things and what like who, you know, different activity, who manages the page. And here you'll see ads from this page. This page is currently running ads. So then you can go to add library. And this shows you at the time all the different ads that Marks and Spencers are running. And it shows you as well which placements they've got them running on to. Um, so it's just another way of kind of looking at if, if you've got a company that's kind of quite similar to yours or you quite like the ads, it's just another way of seeing like what are they using um, to get a bit of inspiration, like what's working for them. And once you're in Ads Monitor, you can search here for other companies. Um, so I can let's see, Debenhams, what's not a good one, thing is they're just somehow. Uh, on that street, not probably. So they're not on the high street, and it'll bring up them. And I'll, they're not running any ads at the minute. Oh, that's on the high street. Um, what you can't do is search by keywords. So if I put in shoes, it'll bring up shops that have shoes in it. The only keywords that it'll bring up stuff for is political or um, kind of ads like that um, because of the transparency. So that's just another way you can see what other ads are running to get a bit of inspiration. <clears throat> so if I just go on here now to um, budgets, we have touched on this before anyway, um, but I would always say they're only one part of the equation, but it is important you're realistic um, about spending enough to get the results that you want. Bear in mind also some placements are more expensive than others, the more popular ones, and at certain times of the year, for instance Christmas, um, there are more advertisers competing um, for spaces, so that is going to push the cost up at those times of year. Ideally, you want to be spending £10 per day per audience. Um, but really, I would say this could go up to £20 per day if you want to do effective testing. <clears throat> um, so, you know, if you've got two images you want to test against each other or two audiences or two different types of copy and so on. It just gives Facebook more scope to do that testing if you have more budget. It obviously costs more to do, um, but you've got more chance of getting results. And then as time goes on, it will bring the cost down because it's easy for Facebook to find the right people uh, and to get the results that you want. However, um, if you do have a smaller budget, um, there are some things you can do uh, that kind of help to get the results. You can run shorter campaigns. So for instance, if you've got £100, it would be better to run a short campaign for 10 days um, and have £10 per day running on that campaign than doing it for a longer period of time, but only having maybe having a budget of a pound or two pounds a day, um, you would definitely get better results from running a shorter campaign with more money per day. So that's one way of doing it. It would also um, be handier to use uh, ad set budget optimization instead of campaign budget optimization because it gives you a bit more control over your ad spend and your budget because you can set it at that level. Um, and it means, uh, uh, you know, you can kind of have your budget split between two ad sets and uh, the, the ads will come out of those ad sets as a campaign. It might direct everything down to one bit that's performing better and you wouldn't have any control over that. <clears throat> so that's another way of doing it. Uh, a good idea is always to test organically first and get social proof. So if you've got um, an image uh, and some tech, uh, some copy that you think, well, this would be good in an ad, put it on your Facebook page or your Instagram page first and see how it um, reacts with your audience there. If it is going really well and it's a very engaging post, fantastic because as I said before, that will then help um, with the, the auction process that if it's already a popular post, <coughs> Facebook will look favorably on it um, and you're more likely to get results from it. 
and definitely do a lot of work considering your audience first. Um, if you can really get that right as right as you can before you run an ad, um, it means that you're not wasting our budget on um, getting your ad in front of people that aren't going to take the action that you want them to take. <clears throat> Um, so if you can use a custom audience as well, um, that is obviously going to increase your chances of getting um, the results. So yes, it will end up being a bit more expensive um, using a custom audience or a warm audience, but you've got more chance of getting conversions. So that will kind of balance out as you go along. <clears throat> is there any questions about budgets before I move on? No questions and uh, budgets in the in the chat. I'm sure. I know we're getting to the end, but if anyone mm -hmm. uh, put it on about budgets, they can put it on. We'll yeah, answer. sure. Okay. Yeah, no problem. Okay. So once you've everything set up in Ad Manager, um, and you've every you're happy with everything, and you set it running, there is one thing you need to do. It's really important. Is to hold your nerves. It's very difficult because you'll start kind of like, oh my god, have I got any sales yet? I've got any leads. What's happening with it? <clears throat> but you need to let you need to let the algorithm sorry you need to let the algorithm uh, do its work and it needs time for this it needs time to go off and find the right people based on your objective and your audience to really optimize your ads um, you need to get 50 event buyers in seven days now this will depend on the campaign you've chosen. So uh, what this means is if it was an engagement campaign, for instance, you'll need to get 50 likes within seven days for your ad to be really optimized. Um, if it was conversions optimized for purchases, it'd be 50 sales. Now, while this is happening, your ads are what's called in learning phase. Now this doesn't mean your ads aren't showing to people. It just means that the algorithm is learning uh, the best people to get your ads in front of. So it's important not to do anything with them at this stage. Uh, so it's important if you kind of um, look in and going, oh, that ad's not really performing well, maybe to try something new with it, is not to edit it before you get these 50 event files. Because what happens then is each time you edit an ad, it goes back into the learning phase again. So the algorithm is starting from scratch. So you're just prolonging the process. Um, so it is very, very hard because you, you know, things might not happen within 24 hours and you kind of like start to worry that, oh God, look, it's going to, you know, come from this. But I would just say definitely hold your nerves. Um, I would suggest you leave maybe for three to five days before changing anything. Um, the longer your ads are running, the smarter the algorithm becomes. That's just the way it works. <clears throat> um, now, once your um, ads are running, like I said before, it's always really important to check the data after um, your ads have run um, to get feedback on them. Uh, but also while your ads are running as well, uh, especially on ads managers, there's, there's so many different data points you can look at and um, it can get a bit confusing, but I would definitely say go on to um, ads manager to have a look at all the different things you can uh, look at. Um, but some of the main ones, um, that you want to look at and some of the levels uh, returns you want to be seeing are roughly around these. So the first one is click through rate. This measures the amount of time your link is clicked on as a percentage of how many times people saw the ad. So for a cold traffic audience, you want this to be sitting at 1%. <clears throat> and for a warm traffic audience, you'll be looking at probably around 3%. <clears throat> The next one then is cost per click. So this is how much of your budget is used to get one click on your ad. And ideally, you want this to be setting it, sitting at less than one pound. The other one to look at is your cost per thousand impressions. So that's how many time, how much it costs for your ad to get in front of 1,000 people. And you ideally want this to be less than 10 pounds. Frequency is another one to keep an eye on. Um, this relates to how many times a person is seeing your ad. So you don't want this to get too high because either they'll switch off or it'll annoy them. And either way, um, if they're seeing the same ad over and over again, they're not gonna engage with it, they'll just switch off. Um, so you want to keep this really um, around 3.5 or less. And if it starts to creep above that, um, that's the time you want to add a new um, ad creative or uh, new ads into your um, ad set into your campaigns, switch the old ones off. 
The next data point then is your cost per acquisition or your cost per lead. Now this is really very service and product dependent. So it's a bit hard to give you um, a definite answer on this one because uh, it, it is very subjective. Um, it depends how much your product is worth and what you feel um, as a business owner is a good uh, return back on it. So for instance, if um, it was costing £15 here per acquisition or lead, but your product's only worth £5, well, that's like pretty rubbish. Um, but if it was £15 and your product's worth £100, then that's pretty good. So I think this is something to work out beforehand. What is your uh, tolerance here with how much it's going to cost if, you know, before you get your... Uh, sales or your leads. The next one then, or the last one, is basically your return on our spend, your ROAS. Um, and ideally, you want this to be more than a pound. So this is for every pound you're spending in advertising, you want to be getting more than a pound back in sales. That's like quite a simple one, um, but that's definitely one that you want to be looking at. Okay, um, that's uh, where I'm going to leave that, um, apart from we'll have time for questions now in a second. Um, but I just want to say thanks uh, for everybody who's joined today. Um, it was a quick run through and there's an awful lot to know about ads, but I hope that's given you enough of an understanding to go away and have a think about it um, and also to run ads if that's what you want to do. Um, like I say, the most important thing is to kind of really understand your audience before you do anything. <coughs> Ads manager is definitely the place uh, to run your ads if you can. Um, go into it, have a look at it, have a play around with it. You can't break anything. Just get familiar with all the different things you can do. Um, you know, set up some dummy ads. You don't have to, have to run them. Uh, just to get familiar with it. Um, I also offer, um, if you want any my help further, and I offer power hours, one-to-one uh, -one training. I can do consultancy support. Um, and I also, if you wanted to outsource, I do um, kind of ads management as well. If that's something that you wanted to do. Um, I'm at Dream Social UK on Facebook and Instagram. Um, the same on Twitter. So I'd love you to come on and connect with me um, if you wanted to. I'm also on LinkedIn and that's my website. Um, so if there's any other questions now, um, I'll take those from people. I will just give <coughs> people any opportunity or if you want to even uh, unmute. Uh, they asked me a question. Um, thanks very much, Danielle. Um, lots, to, lots to take on. Um, I've shared a couple of links as well, Danielle, the maybe Facebook uh, Blueprint and <coughs> Blueprint Ads Manager. So yeah. again, there, there, there's resources online if you want to kind of just delve a bit deeper. Yeah, uh, the, blue, the Blueprint stuff is actually quite good. Yeah, it's pretty good. So if you want to do a bit more training yourself on things. So there, 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 at the moment, there's no question. If anybody has a question, feel free to unmute and um, ask a question or, or put it under the chat. But as I say, it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a very deep topic and there's lots of <clears throat> complexity. And sometimes when you hit that ads manager account and that dashboard for the first time, people can get I suppose, yeah. scared and it can kind of be uh, overpowered. But I suppose it's just uh, pulling it apart and kind of testing it as, as you say yeah no well i mean when i first that when i went into ads for the first time i was scared and i knew quite i knew something about it before i did um, my actual specific training in facebook and instagram ads um but it is it's a bit overwhelming and um but i think it is it's just breaking it down into those different stages that i went through you know kind of think of your audiences first you don't even have to go into ads manager to do your audiences there's a separate tab for audiences and you can start building those and playing about with them whenever you want even if you're not running ads yet it's always good to do that and start building them up so that they're there when you do ads um so then when you go in you just have to pull those audiences in um, and that's like a big bit of it done for you so yeah it's just go go in and have a play with it and there's little question marks next to each little bit of it as well that explains what each bit does so it's like yeah. really useful so just take some time and get to understand it yeah thank you so there's no questions coming in um and there's no nobody with any further questions so just thank you all again for attending uh, and hope you all have a nice uh weekend all right folks okay. all right bye bye, -bye. Okay. bye.